Hello, my friend. Thank you for popping in. You know, I never, uh, I never get used to the fact that uh, you would want to listen to me talk. Uh, I consider that a great honor, and I always, uh, always approach these, uh, even these little videos before I press play or record. I, I just, I really ask the Lord, give me something of substance for these folks who are coming hungry for your kingdom, hungry for your presence, hungry for a greater manifestation of Jesus Christ in their lives. God, give me something that will be meat to nourish them, to build their faith, to cause them to believe, to cause them to lean in, to say yes to you, to live the kind of life that reaches through the veil. And uh, I hope that uh, I hope that you're leaning in more and more, and I hope that you're getting that salve. Jesus said, buy from me. That means there's a price to pay, okay? The kingdom life comes at a cost. People say, how do you know? You know, I, I often talk about kingdom messages and kingdom preaching. People say, how do you know you're listening to kingdom message? It doesn't necessarily, usually, it doesn't always mean they're quoting Bible verses that have the word kingdom in it. Kingdom is God's presence, his power, his glory on earth. And you know you're listening to kingdom preaching, usually when there's a cost involved. The price of the kingdom is very high. and uh, But it's worth it. And so I, I pray that you are paying the price to live the kind of life that reaches through the veil. And I'll tell you, I've been preaching the kingdom for many, many years now, but I've never seen the kingdom coming and manifesting. And I'm not even talking deep, but I mean, I just, in the time that I've really been seeking the kingdom, I've never seen it settling quite like it is right now. Uh, I want you to know we are living in very exciting days. And I know that while darkness covers the earth, deep darkness, the people, that's going to happen, friends. Uh, we know it's going to happen because God said it was going to happen. Okay, so don't be so shocked. I know I'm not saying it's good, but don't be so shocked when the world gets darker and darker. When the minds of men and women become more and more twisted, when common sense doesn't exist anymore and you just see leadership pushing the masses of people into wickedness, into darkness, into things that make absolutely no sense. Don't, don't be shocked. God said it was going to happen. But he also said, we're going to win. Okay, read the end of the book. God wins and there's absolutely nothing that will stop him from doing what he's going to do. And so when he says darkness will cover the earth, deep darkness to the people, but the Lord will rise upon you. You need to know it doesn't matter how dark it gets. The Lord is going to rise upon you. If you're one of those ones who's leaning in, saying yes to him, pursuing his presence, pursuing his kingdom. It, when he says, his glory will appear upon you, it's not maybe, it's going to happen. And uh, it says, kings will come to your, to, to your rising. You know, uh, go, there is at the same time as gross darkness covering the earth, there's going to be brilliant glory being released in the earth. And friends, I want you to know, it's already happening. Eventually, the knowledge of it is going to be everywhere. Now, I didn't say the glory will be everywhere. And God didn't say the glory of the Lord will cover the earth. What did he say? He said the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth, just as the waters cover the sea. That means even though it may have, there may be a lot of darkness and wickedness and evil everywhere. Yet, they're all going to hear about those places. The knowledge of the glory of the Lord is going to be everywhere. Everyone will know about that 
that worship barn that that farmer he turned his barn into into a worship center and the glory's falling and they're going to hear everyone's going to hear in his region about the angels that show up in those meetings and and about the miracles that are happening about the healings every not everyone's going to have the courage to go because they're going to they're going to think they're weird and they're going to say all sorts of things but everybody's going to hear about the glory and all over the earth and all over our nation of Canada, God is going to raise up apostolic hubs, little places where the glory can be poured out, places where the kingdom comes. That's why Jesus said, pray, thy kingdom come. In other words, the kingdom isn't everywhere. We want to pray that it will manifest in our midst and wherever you are in this nation. God wants to set up a kingdom glory hub, a place where his name, where his presence can dwell, a place where he can pour himself out, a place that everyone in the region is going to hear about. Okay, not everyone's going to celebrate it, but everyone's going to hear about it. The knowledge of it will cover the earth. They're going to hear about what God is doing. And uh, and I will tell you something, uh, I I, you know, I prayed for it for a lot of years. I've been seeking the kingdom for a lot of years. I can see right now, even in my own region, even in our own land that we purchased to be, uh, uh, to, to be a place to where we could create an altar for such a place, for such a time. Already we're seeing the kingdom of God settling. I've had some intercessors out. I've been wanting to talk about this for two weeks, but I'm a little nervous. How much do I even share? And I may not share everything, but... I had some intercessors come out I, two weeks ago, and uh, on a Sunday, it was uh, the May the 23rd, I said, okay, we've got, got this land, we've got 160 acres that we've purchased, just, just literally 90 seconds outside of Drayton Valley, I can't wait to show it to you if you haven't been there yet, but we purchased this place, half of it is just beautiful woods, a forest, and, uh, and I knew the Lord was saying to create a place, to build an altar, uh, a, a place in the wilderness, okay? A place that would be hidden away. I'm talking about a place where we could actually literally gather 300 people and their vehicles and we'd be, everything would be hidden in the wilderness. You drive by on the highway uh, just uh, on the edge of the property and no one would even know we were there, okay? Not, not to say that, you know, I mean, the, you know, the authorities know you have a building and you're going to get permits and everything. But it's out of sight and out of mind. And that's what we really need right now is places that are out of sight and out of mind so that when you plan a gathering on a Thursday night and uh, three or 400 people show up, you don't get three or 400 phone calls from the surrounding neighbors saying, oh, I think they're meeting. Nobody will have a clue what we're out doing out in those woods. Plus, it's on private land, which also has its advantages in this day and age. And so... We're creating this place, and I told these intercessors, uh, I said, listen, I, I want to dedicate on the 23rd, I want to dedicate this land to the Lord Jesus Christ for his purposes, for kingdom, and as a place where we will build an altar for the Lord. And uh, I said, if you want to come and join me, I want to anoint the four corners, we're going to do a little prayer walk around the whole perimeter of a quarter section, so that's a two-mile walk. I had 65 intercessors, 65 people show up from all over Alberta saying, we're contending with you for this altar, for this uh, for this place where God will rest. And uh, and even when they arrived, as they started arriving, uh, you know, intercessors, they're very sensitive. They pick up uh, stuff at instant. They, you know, they're seeing angels and they're feeling this and they're seeing that and they're having visions and prophetic experiences and and uh, I love intercessors. They're, some of them are weird, but I love them. I love them. In fact, I, I said to all of them, you know, I was like, before they left, I'm like, you are welcome here. You are celebrated here. I need you here. The reality is we need the intercessors. We need the prayer people. We need the prophetic people. When they gather, where they gather, angels gather. Okay. And so uh, I created 
this place in the wilderness and we, we, we've mulched all this area and we've got this huge area we're going to build the altar and then we built this big huge trail that goes through the forest and spots for cabins in the woods where I'm going to build cabins and people can come and seek the Lord and here you stay in cabin six for the next week and just seek the Lord you know a little little place in the wilderness where you can pray but to have a place where intercessors will come and just pray and, and walk and just stir things up in the spirit. And I'll tell you something, after the end of that day, well, actually, I kind of opened it up for the weekend. Some people came on the Friday and stayed right till the Sunday, but, but um, on the, or they came on Saturday and stayed Sunday. But on that Sunday, on that Sunday, the 23rd, I'll tell you something, uh, I saw I saw a beginning of what I've been contending for for years. I saw the beginning of what I've been preaching on for years. I saw the kingdom of God settling down on an area. There was one time when we were all gathered around uh, this site where the altar is going to be built. And uh, one of the intercessors said, I feel like we're supposed to just make a big circle. So we spread out. It's, it's quite a large area out in the bush that we've cleared out. And so we all gather around the outside. So we're quite spread out. And uh, we just began to pray. And something, friend, something happened. It was just like his presence just came. Even the ones who would not normally feel God's presence, they were feeling God's presence. Even those who might be considered a little spiritually dull, you couldn't miss this. Something was in the air. There was some one. It was, it was him. It was his presence. Even my a friend of mine who who doesn't even know the Lord. She came and she wanted to come on the prayer walk. I thought, are you sure these are like these intercessors could be a little weird? Oh no, I want to come along for the hike. I'm like, okay. When we gathered in that circle and the glory came down, she felt it. She just stood there and just started sobbing and weeping. And uh, I said to her later, I said, were you comfortable with the, everything you saw? She's like, oh, that was wonderful. I, I could feel something when we got into that circle. Something just came. And I said, that's the kingdom of God, honey. That is the kingdom of God. And that was only uh, ankle deep. This is only going to increase, especially as we keep bringing the intercessors back. And they, they come and they pray and they contend. We may have a couple hundred angels on the land right now. It'll be a couple thousand in no time. And uh, many of these intercessors were getting prophetic words. that This is a place where it is like a Moravian fall. Some of you would know where that is. Some don't. But I mean, I've traveled there. There's so much angelic activity in that region. And uh, prophetic people have said, like, I just, I can't stay for more than a few days. There's just too much activity. I can't even sleep at night. Uh, God is resting and God is and is abiding. He wants to come and abide in different places. He wants there to be places on the earth where people travel to go to those places to encounter the presence of the Lord. And uh, oh, even that morning, you know, it's funny. It was nine sixteen that morning, and this you know, some of you may roll your eyes at me, but I'm going to tell this story anyway because it, it touched me. But at nine sixteen that morning. Uh, out in the woods, I have a trail camera for watching my deer and and, uh, and moose and the elk that come through. And I'm, I'm always watching to see what's in the area. I'm a hunter. And uh, there's a trail camera, but this camera is not set on sensitive. It's set on medium. So it does not take pictures of nothing. It only takes pictures when there's movement. Okay. A motion sensor. And uh, I could show you the last hundred pictures this camera took. And in every single picture, there's a deer or a, or a coyote or something. But there's always an animal, you know. And uh, But anyways, at 9.16 that morning, the morning that we dedicated the land and gave the land to the Lord Jesus Christ, at 9.16 that morning. By the way, the reason I say 9.16 is to me, when I see the number 9.16, God speaks to me often through numbers that coincide with scriptures. And when I see 9.16, I instantly think of Matthew 9.16, which is a fasting verse. And many of us were finishing a 40-day fast that day. It was my last day. And uh, some did it on veggies. A number of us, we did it on water. I did, I did another water one of us. So I was really skinny, really weak. That two-mile hike, that was work. You know, we were kind of, some of us were holding each other up, you know, 40 days on water, you know, and now let's go for a two mile hike uh, in the sun. 
But uh, that morning at 9.16, by the way, Matthew 9.16 is the scripture where the disciples of John come to Jesus and said, how can we fast and your guys don't fast? And Jesus basically says, there's no point. I'm with them. And uh, But once there's a day coming where I'll be taken away. And in their morning, they will fast. Fasting is about morning. And 9.16, he says, no one puts a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. Okay, you don't patch an old garment with new cloth. Uh, now, that was before polyester. You can do that now. <laughs> but uh, uh, but anyways, in fact, I just got a pair of my pants patched yesterday with a new cloth. I told her, I said, you know, there's a Bible verse against this. And she said, this is polyester. I'm like, oh, okay. So it's not going to shrink. But what point was, was Jesus saying, if you use an, the new thing to patch the old thing, there will be shrinkage and it'll tear away and it'll actually do more damage. He uses another example of putting new wine into an old wine skin. It actually bursts the skin. What God's saying is there's some people, okay, even Christians, that uh, you are part of the old thing, but you're not going to be able to handle the new thing, okay? I, I know this is going to maybe rub some people wrong, but some of you aren't ready for the new thing. Some of you can't handle the new thing. Because you're an old wine skin, you're an old pair of trousers, and God's not going to use the new thing to patch your old hole. You've got to become renewed. You need to be renewed. You need to become a new wine skin. You need to become a new pair of trousers. God's not going to just take the kingdom of God, a little tiny patch of it, and patch, uh, put a little spot on you. No, no. You want the new thing? It's all or nothing. You got to have a whole new suit, a whole new Jesus suit. You got to you get rid of those old pants and get a whole new set of pants that have been created out of the new cloth. Anyways, I, I'm not, I didn't mean to preach on that today, but 916, go meditate on that. Let the Lord speak to you about that scripture. But anyways, I see 916 and I go, ooh, a fasting verse. Fasting, by the way, is a big part of the new wineskin. Those of you who have poo-poo fasting, you're going to miss out on some things. You'll never enter into certain things because you weren't willing to choose God's path. And that's one of God's paths to a kingdom life is, is a fasted life. And so he's, it's a fasting. Fasting leads to kingdom. And, uh, and so 916, I see this picture arrive and I go, ooh, 916. You know, we're finishing our 40-day fast today, and I get a 916. The picture pops up, and there's no deer in it. The only thing in this picture that sent to my phone is a beam of light that looks like it's about, I don't know, five feet long. Straight line, kind of slashing through, the, just through space. It starts, I don't know, maybe five feet up in the air. It ends about a foot before it hits the ground, which, and that was what kind of was, you know, I mean, I've seen, you know, light, you know, hit dust or whatever, or light shines through, you know, through the trees and you can sort of see a beam of light, but it, it was that it did, it stopped, you know, like light doesn't stop until it hits something, you know, light will continue till it hits the ground or whatever. And so I just remember looking at this thinking, that's weird. And as soon as I saw that light, I instantly in my spirit said, Something said, that's an angel's sword, Steve. And I went, whoa, <laughs> I got a picture of an angel's sword on my trail camera. But then, you know, my natural, my mind, I think, oh, it can't be. An well, that's silly. You know, and it's probably just light reflecting off a tree and maybe the dust stopped right here. Or, I, I you know, you, you start to try to think of ways to talk yourself out of it. And, insta and I felt the Lord saying, see, that's your problem, Steve. It's hard for the rich to enter the kingdom. It's hard, even those who are, they think too much. You don't have a childlike heart. That, that's your problem. You know, the Jesus said, unless you have a childlike heart, you'll never enter the kingdom of God. You won't see the kingdom of God. You won't experience the kingdom of God. You got to have a childlike faith, you know, and and so I repented. I'm like, Lord, I'm sorry. I do. I know. I, I, I do. I overthink stuff. Forgive me, Lord. Thank you for the angels that are gathering, wandering through my land, 
and I thank you that they're carrying swords. You know, and so I just kind of praise the Lord. Well, when we, as the intercessors, gather 65 of us in this big circle, and the glory just settled, and then the people just began to weep, uh, one of the intercessors, uh, this man, he, he cried out and he said, I saw two angels. I see two. They're like 20 feet tall, cherubim of angels, and they both have light swords and like swords made out of light. And uh, instantly the Lord just hit my spirit and said, I told you it was a sword. <laughs> I'm like, okay, it was a sword. It was a sword. So anyways, uh, but that's what it looked like. It looked, it was, the way it's sitting in the air, it's almost like the angel would have to be about 20 feet tall. And at the top, you could almost see a blurry spot where his hand would be holding it. And then it, and it's just kind of, you know, almost like the sword is just kind of um, just dangling beside him as he walks along. And, and the picture got to be, I'll show you the sword. Okay, you can laugh if you want, but I'll show you the sword. I'm going to show you some pictures right now. Uh, so just, I'll show you a few first, just so you can kind of see what I normally see on the camera. You'll see here, there's a deer, it takes a picture. There's a deer, it takes a picture. Here's another deer, it takes a picture. But in this next picture, you need to know, there is no deer. Check this out. Huh? <laughs> what do you think? I mean, what is that? What is that? Well... You can say whatever you want, but I'm telling you something. I'm trying to embrace a childlike heart. And I'm saying, okay, Lord, you say it's a sword. I say, I'm going to say it's a sword. And so many of these intercessors, they're wandering around and they're getting pictures. In fact, a couple of intercessors came uh, after the, like a week later and said, is it all right if we just go and pray on the trails? I'm like, yeah, go for it. Go for it. And so I let them in. And, uh, and oh yeah, no, they were saying on that West side, they, they got there and they could feel the presence of a person welcoming them. It's like these, these, these angels are welcoming them saying, come, come and pray, come and seek the kingdom, come and, and pray this prayer, thy kingdom come. And, uh, you know, the Bible says, since we are surrounded by a great, you, you may, you may roll your eyes at some of this. You need to know if you're a believer, there's always angels around. Uh, I'm just telling you, I think there's more showing up in certain places. And, uh, this is one of them, but we are surrounded. And the Bible says, since you are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, that's not just angels. Actually, that's there's uh, there's other stuff going on on the other side of the veil you don't know nothing about. You know, your great aunt who loved and served Jesus Christ and lived that kingdom life and died 20 years ago. You don't know how she may be involved at times. God may be using her as an intercessor for you. Remember, Jesus got a visit from Moses and Elijah after they had died and gone on. Well, you say, well, that sounds like necromancy. No, no, that necromancy is, is you know, talking to the dead. These guys are alive, and uh, the great cloud of witnesses are alive, and uh, we don't understand fully what's going on behind the veil, but I'll tell you something. The kingdom of God is coming and manifesting in different places, and uh, we're going to have more and more gatherings and, uh, you know, even after that, we did our little prayer walk with 65, but I told a bunch of other people, I said, if you want to just come, we're going to have a worship gathering after. We had almost 200 people, and I didn't even announce it on Facebook. Almost 200 people driving from all over, hours away, just to worship the Lord, to gather with others and to worship the Lord and to encounter his presence. And man, the Lord showed up, and boy, did he bless us. And I also cooked a good brisket, and so we fed, we fed them well. I believe in feeding people well. Jesus fed the masses, you know, and so you come to my, one of my gatherings, you're probably going to get fed uh, real well, unless you're fasting, and then we'll make you some nice broth if it's the end or something like that. But, uh, you know, things are loosening up for the summer, and uh, there's going to be more gatherings. I want to encourage you, friends. I know some of you have been kind of locked up for a long time, and I have some opinions about that, but I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go there. But I'll tell you this. It's time for you to gather again. 
It's time for you to worship the Lord. It's time for you to return. You say, well, I've been watching YouTube videos, Steve. I watch all your shows. That's not enough. Friends, that's not enough. Watching your favorite preacher online is not enough. You need to gather with people. There are some things you cannot get through a YouTube video. You can watch one of my videos online. I'm going to video some of these gatherings we have. But I'm telling you, if you just watch it online, you're missing out. You're not going to encounter the kingdom in the same way as the people who gather together. He, Jesus didn't say, if my people who are called by my name, you know, we'll, we'll Zoom together. No, he didn't say if two or three will Zoom, I'm with them. No, he says, if two of you, two or three, you gather together, you got to gather together. We need to gather together. And so uh, I'm encouraging you, get back out. You know, your church is finally, most of you, your churches are opening again, okay? Gather and worship or find a church that just said, th that is open. Or uh, some of them have stayed open, by the way. There are a few of us have just said, we're going to worship the Lord and it will, we'll pay the fine if we have to, you know? Uh, but uh, friends, it's time to gather. We got a summer where we can gather. We're going to be able to plan some big outdoor gatherings as well. I'd encourage you. You have nothing better to do with your life. Get your butt in your car. Drive the two hours, the four hours, whatever. Gather with us. Let's go after God. And in a couple of months, when the government decides they're going to just put all these more controls and shut us all down again, which will happen, by the way. This is just a temporary relief. You know, they, they only, are, they only, they can only do what they can get away with. And they know they can't lock people up all summer or they'll revolt. So they'll let us go. They'll give you a little bit of freedom. Let's enjoy our freedom. Let's gather. Let's have big meetings. Let's seek the Lord in the outdoors and or in the indoors and everywhere else. But when things do get locked down again, I encourage you, don't just hide away for another year. You need to be gathering with other people and pursuing the kingdom of God. And, uh, and, and what happens is you, you encounter God. There's an increased grace. There's an increased spirit of righteousness to it's that, which is that grace that strengthens you to say yes to God, to say no to ungodliness, to live a, a holy and righteous life. And, uh, and you were not made to walk alone. You were just not made to walk alone. And so it's absolutely essential that you gather. Anyways, I've gone on for 27 minutes. So I want to end this one. To those of you who stayed to the end, God bless you. You're, I know you're the, you're the hungry one. And so I just pray, Father, that you would touch every heart uh, listening to the sound of my voice right now. May your kingdom manifest in their lives, in their marriages, with their children, in their finances, in their physical bodies. I pray that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead would quicken them, would strengthen their bodies, would heal them of all sickness and disease, and, uh, and uh, energize them to live the kind of life that reaches through the veil. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Friend, uh, if you uh, aren't already, make sure you join the Oil Patch Pulpit community, which is just my email list. You get all my videos for free. And if you live close enough to Drayton Valley that you say, hey, I want to know about any gatherings you're ha having because I can't announce them all, um, please email me. Uh, either way, you want to join the community or you say, I want to know about gatherings, just email me and say, I want to join the community or I want to join the community and I want to know about gatherings. We got two lists, okay? So let us know. And uh, just through an email to me, I get them all feedback at oilpatchpulpit.com. And Shanna, who works with me, she, she sees all the emails and she puts you on the list. And, and if you say, I want to be notified of gatherings. And the thing about the gatherings too is, friends, there are things I can't say on YouTube uh, or I just get censored. This video would never get to you if I preach the whole word of God. Uh, that's the world we're living in. There are things I can't say uh, in local churches uh, on a Sunday morning because you can get fined and you, and you can, there are penalties. And so this is the world we live in. 
we have to gather. That's why these altars matter. We need to have places where we can say the stuff that we're not allowed to say uh, on YouTube or even on Sunday morning. We need to have places where, you know, that's the thing about a camp type setting too. And that's what it, this, if you see what we're building here, it kind of looks like a bit of a camp. I don't call it a camp because then people think of horses and archery, you know, but it's a bit of a retreat center. And the thing is people, when you go away, there's just something about going away to, to one, to, to a camp or a, a retreat center is you, you don't expect the service to be uh, one hour long, you know, Sunday morning, you know, you get all sorts and you kind of got to cater to all of them. And some people just don't have the, the, the spiritual appetite to handle an hour or two hours of worship. Uh, uh, and so you kind of have to, you know, the reality is many churches cater to small spiritual appetites. Well, we need to have places that cater to large spiritual appetites. We need to have places where people who can actually handle two, three hours of worship and know how to press in and go to those deep places that you can't get to in a 45 minute service where they can come and gather. And so that's what we're, we're building. And by the way, maybe some of you out there, you have a vision for this and you want to be a part of this. Let me know. You can help us build this. We need help. We need volunteers. We need I need, uh, I got an electrician, a couple electricians that said, when it's time to build the building, let me know. I'll help you with the electrical. I'll, I'll volunteer my, some time, you know. Uh, I've got people who are, are, uh, I had people donate culverts. I had one that's 13 and a half feet diameter. You can drive a truck through it. That is going to be our, our, um, our, um, root cellar. I'm making a root cellar out of this massive culvert, you know, because we're going to have greenhouses and we're going to have aquaponics and we're going to, I really believe in eating clean and there's, there's a whole vision I can share, but, but you know, if you want to be a part of it, maybe there's some, maybe you just want to come out on one of our volunteer days and just come and beautify the paths, just walk along the paths and drag old ugly trees out onto the path and we can mulch them and we'll make our paths more beautiful. Maybe you just want to sow into this thing. Maybe God's made you a Joseph and you want to sow into this. I'm having people who are sending gifts and saying for the altar, to build the altar. Some of them are people I didn't even think they could write a check for uh, for a couple thousand dollars. And yet they're saying for the altar. And so uh, if you want to be a part of what we're doing, just uh, reach out, let me know. I'm not really big on taking offerings and whatnot, but uh, but I know that what we're building is certainly bigger than me. And and we don't even know fully what it looks like because God is still bringing the team. And, and, and it's not my ministry or it's not just an expression of Stephen Kara. This is a place that there's just going to be a team of people and some people love gardening. And so, you know what, there's going to be gardens and some people have an anointing for chickens. And so there's going to be chickens, you know, and eggs. And some people have an anointing for, for worship and for just uh, creating log cabins. We're going to have log cabins out in the woods where people can come and stay. And so God's bringing different people, different gifts. And as he does, we're going, oh, wow, so that's what this is going to look like. So we don't even know what it looks like. We just know that those ones that God brings us to run with us, their fingerprints are going to get all over this. And God loves that. God loves to use little pieces of you and little pieces of me. And, and, and he mixes it all together and he puts in a whole lot of himself and something beautiful comes out of it. And so anyways, it's, uh, it's very exciting. And, uh, if you live in this region and you have a heart for revival and for, uh, for, for gathering, uh, gathering in, in revival atmosphere, well, then maybe you want to run with us and build with us. Just, uh, reach out if that's something you're interested in. Anyways, God bless you. Keep seeking the kingdom, pay the price, buy the field. We'll see you soon.